Hello friends, um, welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you're back. My name is Rabbit and my pronouns are they them and um, I don't know exactly what this video will look like yet but basically my plan, um, Cage and I, we couldn't find any like good events to go to on Halloween that felt like safe and um, you know like good for us to do and stuff so I decided instead of like going out to an event or do something like that for Halloween we're gonna have like a really fun night in and we're gonna like get dressed up in our costumes and take pictures and like go walk around and like look at all the Halloween decorations in our little town and um, I'm prepping a bunch of Halloween spooky baked goods right now um, so that's what I'm doing um, I have a bunch of things planned to make um, almond moon cookies these ones are like a more like traditional like salmon and like holiday kind of like cookie for me um, and they have like um, kind of more like spiritual significance and I make them into moon shapes and um, I, I like to make them for Halloween I like to make them um, around like important events in my life <laughs> um, um, the other baked goods that I am planning on are matcha like cutout cookies in ghost shapes hazelnut chocolate cookies in bat shapes because um, I recently made my own like hazelnut chocolate spread because I really like Nutella or like I really liked it when I could eat it but I've been vegan since I was 12 so no Nutella um, but we went to Bulk Barn recently and got a bunch of hazelnuts and I roasted them and mixed them with some melted chocolate and it's the best thing ever so I'm going to use a bunch of that spread that I made um, to make some chocolate cookies um, and I'm also going to make some gingerbread pumpkins hopefully and chocolate cupcakes with like spooky sprinkles so that's the plan I don't know how much of it I'm gonna film probably not much um, I'm gonna just like prep the ingredients today what day is it today so today is the 27th today is the 27th of October um, so I'm gonna make these things and like kind of store them in the fridge so that on Halloween day I can like pull out a bunch of them and do my baking we're not really sure what we want to eat yet for like Halloween dinner I was thinking like a frozen vegan pizza like that one's one of our favorites and we're gonna watch a bunch of spooky movies and I'm planning to build a little blanket fort um, to watch all the spooky movies in so um, I'll show you guys that if I set it up last night um, I'm really excited about this I made okay so basically um, Cage and I are going as Beetlejuice and Lydia for Halloween um, and the Beetlejuice Cage the Beetlejuice costume the cage got didn't come with like the little ruffly neck thing so I made one last night and it took me two tries the first one that I made was so big and it was like basically like a mushroom costume like it looked ridiculous so I was like frick and it took me like three hours to make and then the second one I tried to make took me about 20 minutes and I was like oh my god why did I not just like do this the first time because the second one I made worked out perfect um so yeah I'll show you guys that really quick so this is what his costume looks like and this lacy thing is the thing that I made yesterday um, for the costume. I am hoping it works out good. I, I'm pretty happy with it, um, especially for like how short of time it took. And this is my costume and just like seeing them hung up together like oh my god it makes me so happy. I'm so excited to do this with him. Like it's oh, it's gonna be so freaking cute. Yeah, yay. Oh, I can't wait. And um, I also got some white um, baby's breath flowers and a single red rose for our costume. And oh, I just can't. I can't wait. I can't wait. I also need to make him like a little corsage, but I have like some fake flowers and I'm just gonna like paint it black or whatever. Either way, on I get to making some cookies. Um, the recipe I am using is from Vegan Cookies Invade Your Cookie Jar. This is it. And my camera is dying. So I will link the recipe down below or like write it out in the description and see you when my camera charges a little more and I've made some cookies. Okay, bye for now. Okay, so pretty much ended up just doing kitchen and baking stuff all day. So right now, making vegan pierogies. Um, these are like the ones that are scraps, so they are like very messy looking. But I'm really proud with like how most of these look. These ones are still boiling, these ones are frying, then they'll be done and then I'll be able to put them in the made just like so many sweet things today. Um, so I have my almond crescent cookies from a while ago, um, the matcha cookies, the um, chocolate hazelnut, and the gingerbread. Um, so, um, so those are the cookies that I have made for the day and I am super excited to roll them out and make them soon. All right, so I have a feeling these won't look as cute when they're baked as they do right now. Um, so these are the matcha ghosts and I use some little chocolate chips to give them little cute faces and I'm obsessed with it. It's super precious. And these are the pumpkins and I'm hoping to make some icing to give them like little jack-o'-lantern faces. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna stick these in the freezer for a couple days um, 
and then we'll have them on Halloween. I'm super stoked. Um, so it's October 28th and um, it's just kind of like tester night for some of the cookies. I put a bunch of them in the freezer last night and decided to just uh, bake a couple today and decorate and see how I like them. Uh, so these are the chocolate hazelnut bats and pretty happy with them. Um, they didn't turn out very um, dark in color so I sprinkled them with like a cocoa powder and sugar topping and I was worried that they wouldn't taste enough like um, chocolatey hazelnut situation so I decided to make them into sandwich cookies. So they're a little like bat sandwiches um, with like a hazelnut chocolate ganache kind of filling that I made um, and I used to like love to make it and just like roll it into little balls and cover them in cocoa powder and like they would just be like really delicious so I think this will be a good um a good combination we'll, we'll see though all right so I will admit I am not great at icing cookies however the gingerbread pumpkins yes rustic but Adorable, no? I I think they turned out pretty cute. And um, yeah, this was attempt number one. Um, I just <laughs> used like this icing that I made with powdered sugar and some oat milk and some vanilla in like a little Ziploc bag and I made a huge mess. But you know what? I think they look pretty cute. And um, now I'm off to clean up. <laughs> Hey friends! So today is October 29th and I have to work later today but I do have like pretty much my morning fairly free so I decided that I'm going to set up like a Halloween fort kind of to watch movies in because me and Cage, uh, well Cage showed me this website recently that like you can watch lots of movies for free on type of thing but it doesn't work on like our regular um, TV. Um, I can only watch it on my laptop or my phone. Um, so I decided in order to like have like a really cozy little night where we can watch things on my laptop because I really want to watch Elvira with him because um, he's not seen it before. So I wanted to build like a little Halloween fort in this room so and I've made a list of all the movies that I've been watching this month, all my Halloween favorites and stuff. Um, so maybe after this, maybe after work, because I don't know how much time I'll have after I set this up, um, I can like sit in the fort and talk to you guys about all the movies I've watched and like maybe give some recommendations in case you haven't seen them. Um, but yeah, otherwise, let's get into the fort. And in the meantime, I'm just gonna like speed up the footage and um, I'll be watching like Corpse Bride or something in the background. But um, I hope you enjoy. <laughs> So I don't know if you guys remember when like lockdown started and Ikea put out that thing about how to make pillow forts and blanket forts and stuff and I was like re-looking at that graphic the other day and that's how I <laughs> came up with this idea but I found that um, the desk that my dad built me and these two like dining room chairs that um, Cage's sister gave to us made like the perfect um, upper part for the fort uh, but while I was settling setting up the lower part I just um, took the big blanket away um, and I'm just setting up a bunch of like pillows I took all the big pillows that I could find in the house and like old cat beds and then every single blanket that we own a lot of them are like made by Cage's mom or made by me so like there's lots of like sort of handmade touches which is sweet a lot of them are from the thrift store and like friends and time so it's just like fun um, to have all the things and you got to test it out and make sure that it's comfy so that's what I'm doing here just you know quality control very important part of building the the pillow fort um, I put my little like mermaid tail blanket and, and the configuration did change like a little bit because at one point my camera died and I like rearranged some stuff um, so you will see the final product and it's a smidge different but now I'm just putting the like roof back up since the bottom is all set up uh, adding in another string of lights and setting up those all around and um, yeah that's that's how it went hi okay apologies my camera ran out of room so I had to go like download a bunch of stuff and delete a bunch of stuff but the bare bones are set up of the tent and I added a bunch of lights and stuff and I'm super excited and I've got um, my bucket of stuffed animals that I collected from the Halloween display and I will put them in here but first let's go inside I want to show you guys this is what it looks like from the outside I put my little moon lamp down there and a bunch of fairy lights here is where I intend to have like the lying down happen and then put the computer somewhere in that direction put down um, the like spider web cloth hello we're in the fort sorry this is like <laughs> oh probably not the best for recording because it's like a little smush down here but I'm just gonna set up these stuffed animals and spooky guys and um 
let's let's do that all right so this is what it looks like all put together got all my like spooky stuffed animals got my fairy lights jack skellington cat bed in case lemon or tuna want to come join us even though they probably will just sit on our laps because that's their favorite spot so then lying down it's kind of like this and little moonlight covers up top all the little blankets surrounded by stuffed animals hopefully the kitties will join us on halloween night super super fun i'm, I'm really excited hey there and um it's another day it's october 30th which is halloween eve oh my god i'm like literally jumping out of my skin i'm so excited for tomorrow um however today i do work but i have uh like a couple hours before i go to work so i figured i'd get some baking done for tomorrow since i've already like prepped the stuff and maybe i'll make some cupcakes as well and i want to show you guys one thing that's really exciting um so basically i've been working the past couple days <clears throat> firstly one thing I was cat nannying, not yesterday, but the day before yesterday, and we have so many cute orange and black cats, and they all have like really sweet, because we named them in batches, so no cats ever get the same name. That's why like Tuna was from the fish batch, so she was adopted, so like her cats in her batch were like goldfish and guppy and minnow and that kind of thing, and that's how her name is Tuna. Um, but right now with like the Halloween, they try to give them kind of more spooky names. So we have Caramel Apple and Peanut Buttercup and Mr. Goodbar, who I call Mr. Good Boy because he's like the bestest boy in the world. He's so sweet. He's like a black and white tuxedo boy and he's so handsome and he's so big and so soft and I love him but the other day I got to just like cuddle and snuggle with Elphaba who's like this black kitty um and she just like sits at the like little door between like the cat room and like the staff room in the back and she just meows and meows and meows until you pick her up and just snuggle her and then she just like needs on you and she's the best and I'll insert a clip of it if I remember because it like literally makes my day and I'm gonna miss her but I'm so happy she's adopted but the thing that I wanted to tell you sorry this is so rambly is that um, we've had like a lot of cupcakes expire at work um, and when that you do that then I get to take them home or whoever gets to take them home um, because we can't sell them anymore and um, we have like vegan cupcakes because we have like a vegan supplier and like they do a bunch of sweet stuff but uh, and I like love their place and I like go there even when I'm not working and stuff um, but they did a bunch of spooky kind of theme things so one of the things were these mummy cupcakes and they expired so I got to take them home for free last night and I want to show you guys they're so cute Look at them! So they're purple velvet, which is like red velvet, and they're like little mummies! How cute is that? I love it. And then the other cupcakes that I got to take home recently, which aren't Halloween themed, but they're just delicious and beautiful, so I'll show you while I'm here. They're these um, matcha rose cupcakes. Look how gorgeous this is. Excuse me. I love it. Um, so these will probably be a part of the Halloween treats if they last that long. Um, but yeah, and I also have been making spooky ice cubes with the like silicone ice um, thingies that I got. So I have jack-o'-lantern ice cubes, um, bats, and witch hats. Um, so I will be making like a chilled tea that Cage and I can enjoy for Halloween night and it'll have all spooky ice cubes in it so I'm really excited about that. But otherwise I just started preheating the oven before I started recording so I figured we'll bake some cookies. While the cookies are baking I'll make some cupcakes and maybe talk about um, just the Halloween movies I've been watching. I have my list because I just don't think I had time the other day when I was working and like after I made the fort. Um, so we'll chat about some movies, we'll bake some cookies, Tuna's meowing in the background, um, and yeah, let's get into it, I guess. So first I'm gonna start with the um, matcha ghosts. Cage really likes these matcha cookies. They're kind of like shortbread -y texture sort of situation. So um, I think he'll be excited about that. I really hope they kind of maintain their shape. I have a feeling they're gonna puff up and look really ridiculous, but um, hey, we'll see. Um, so the first movie on my list that I watched for Halloween season um, is The Love Witch. And um, it's perhaps not super appropriate if you are underage, so I would not recommend it uh, for that. But if you are um, above legal age and okay with like nudity, stuff like that, and, and it's like a bit of like a super artsy movie, like you know those ones that don't really make sense? I usually hate those like a lot. Oh my god, sorry. I'm gonna take Tuna's like crunchy bag away because it's way too loud for this video. 
Um, so it has like some adult scenes and also like if you are Wiccan or pagan or like practice witchcraft at all like a lot of these movies you're gonna like roll your eyes at the portrayal of witchcraft and also if you're not even into that but you're like into acting perhaps like the acting in this movie is like so strange like everyone's just like a little bit off and it's very interesting to watch and I like think it's intentional but the reason that I love this movie is just like the interior of Elaine's house and um, the tea party room and like basically all the scenes, everything is so beautiful. The main actress, um, I don't know her name, Samantha something maybe, uh, but her character's name is Elaine. She is so gorgeous, completely beautiful. The costume design is impeccable. Um, the artwork that they display is gorgeous. Um, there's just like, so much beautiful stuff in it but also there's like some real creepy characters and like unfortunately what i was noticing when i was like re-watching a lot of these movies i was like wow every single one of these has like some terrible scene or joke about like sexual violence and it's like it's so frustrating or like mental health issues or like just like bad portrayals of stuff especially because a lot of these movies are like older and there were like so many times that i was just like cringing and i was like god damn like I wish this wasn't in the movie, but okay. Um, um, but it's really pretty, and if you're just into like artsy movies and you can just kind of like turn your brain off for a moment and just all the beautiful colors and the pretty ladies and whatever, it's it's a good it's a good watch. I enjoy it. The next movie on my list was Hocus Pocus. I rewatched this one pretty recently, um, just because like all month I've just been like watching and rewatching like Halloween movies and Halloween favorites and whatever, whatever, and. Um, I just I wish every single movie ever was just like long shots of like autumn in the world and like beautiful falling leaves and like spooky magic and like Halloween costumes and like just a weird makeup like I wish that was every single movie like if that was every single movie I would I would never stop watching movies um, basically like even though it's like a silly kids movies and like kids movie and like I didn't really watch it growing up um, it still feels really nostalgic for me and it just makes me like get so in the mood of autumn and um, it's just like a classic for a reason you know so Hocus Pocus is a great one uh, Nightmare Before Christmas I also watched again recently of course I would tend to watch it at Halloween and at Christmas it's both of those movies for me or, like both of those times for me um, makes sense and a lot of the songs from the movie are like on my Halloween playlist so I'm like constantly um, listening to that Halloween classic I it blows my mind every time I think of the fact that it's like all animated like that like ugh, animation is so crazy I um, have never really been into it like into making it myself or like interested in that side of it but just watching it I'm like wow this is people are so talented it's amazing um, next is Beetlejuice Cage and I watched it last night. It was super fun. Um, I'm really excited for tomorrow when we're gonna dress up. I might try to do like a test out of the makeup or the hair tonight. <sighs> Maybe not though, cause I'll just like film it when I do it. But either way, I'm super excited to dress up with him. And uh, it was just like so cool to watch the movie last night. I love Adam and Barbara and I love Chuck. Uh, Chuck I think is actually like Charles, the dad, like uh, Delia Dietz's husband, Lydia's dad. Um, <laughs> he's like one of my favorite characters and I think Cage is too which is like so I don't know he's just like such an underrated little part of the film but I love him and Delia Dietz I like it's so wild because I love Schitt's Creek and like she's Moira and she's Delia in there and it, it's just like so fun to watch her and the costume design is so gorgeous and just like the set design is so cool so yeah Halloween classic um I really really enjoyed it next on the list ooh, Sweeney Todd Cage doesn't like musicals, but Sweeney Todd is one musical that he actually does like, which is pretty fun. Oh, uh, oh, uh, this uh, apple cider vinegar has like the mother in it, so it looks kind of gross, but it's okay. Um, but yeah, Sweeney Todd, I love the costumes in it specifically. You know um, the scene where Mrs. Lovett is like singing to Sweeney Todd, to Mr. Todd on the beach and like in her like little fantasy land and like she's wearing this like red and white pinstripe dress oh my god that's gorgeous or like in her little sailor outfit where he or like her sailor dress and he has like his like black and white like old school swimming suit i like love those old style swimming suits i don't know why but i i just think they're so cool um so yeah sweetie todd i watched recently and i love it um i think it's like super 
it's what because I don't really usually love like bloody movies and gory movies and that kind of thing but the blood and the gore in that is like so fake looking and so like overly set like all the blood is so red and overly saturated that it doesn't feel like like since it's not hyper realistic it feels a lot less real and a lot easier for me to like stomach so that's like I guess an upside of it and um Cage and I watched together recently Adam's Family Value and the Adam's Family the ones that are on Netflix like um with Christina Ricci like the one um where the kids go to summer camp and there's the nanny and then the one where there's like someone impersonating Uncle Fester I love the Adam's Family so much dude I um really need to go ahead and like watch some other versions of it um because i know like the cartoon version exists and that kind of thing but i've just like never seen it i've just like seen the the couple of movies that exist um but i love them so much and they have such a special place in my heart and i just love morticia and gomez's relationship so much and like i really want to make some art of them or even just like print out a collage of like some of their pictures of like them kissing because it's like so cute like whenever they're like in the like swoopy position like it's so precious I freaking love Morticia and Gomez they're like such relationship goals um so Adam's Family always a classic I absolutely love it and um the movie where the baby like <laughs> I don't know it like cracks me up so much every time they're like we needed like a name that a child could live with so we went with pubert like it, it oh my god it like uh, I just I love that scene so much. Where's my one third of a cup? So yeah, Adam's Family, always amazing. Definitely recommend it if you haven't watched it. I don't know how you've gotten this far in life without watching it, but watch it because you're you're missing out and it's wonderful. And if you haven't watched it in a while, rewatch it because it's, it's a really good one. Um, and then Corpse Bride, obviously Tim Burton like animated classics. One third cup. Powder. I rewatched it recently and I can't believe I never noticed that like the movie opens with like a butterfly being set free and also the movie ends with like spoiler but this movie came out so long ago but the movie ends with like Emily turning into a bunch of butterflies and like setting herself free and I never noticed that and I can't believe I didn't until rewatching it recently this month um, but I love that movie and um, I remember when I was younger I was really sad that Victor and Emily didn't end up together um, and I just was like oh like I'm so sad that she like turned into butterflies at the end and like whatever whatever and like now rewatching it as an adult and just being like no like he's living and she's dead and like it's art like they didn't have a real relationship like she just kind of was like oh you want to marry me okay I guess we're married now and he like wasn't into it the whole time so like the idea that like he should just be like in it now like I, I, I don't know so it was really interesting to rewatch that and like have really different feelings I'm like man like I get that Emily's like desperate and stuff in the beginning of the movie but like her character growth throughout it is really beautiful and um it's like sad but like I, I prefer the ending to the, the idea of like her staying with Victor so Corpse Bride loved it enjoyed it love all the music in it remains of the day is one of my favorite songs even like it's on my halloween playlist because i just like oh i love it <laughs> um and then i don't know if this technically counts as a halloween movie but i put it matcha ghosts are potentially done they actually didn't like poof out too much look how cute these are i'm i'm happy about this yay okay um time to bake something else in the oven Okay, yeah, so next on the list, um, and I was saying that I don't know if this, like, technically counts as a Halloween movie. I don't think it does, but I included it and, like, a couple other movies that are just, like, in a fantasy setting because, like, Halloween fantasy go hand in hand. Why not, right? Um, so it's The Labyrinth. I love The Labyrinth so much. I love David Bowie in it. I love all the goblins in it. The construction of the puppets is just incredible. Sarah, I know a lot of people find her annoying, but I really like her and I find her, um... I don't know. I like love all the scenes where she's like putting on lipstick and like being in her fantasy world and like reading her like books and like I don't know I just found it so like beautiful and romantic and like I know that she's like very rude to her brother in the beginning but like oh my gosh and also David Bowie like contact juggling with the crystal ball I remember oh my god all I wanted to do when I after I watched that movie was learn how to contact juggle and I did like learn a couple of things about it like when I was in Australia when I was like 16 with my friend because we were like hanging with a bunch of circus people um but it never really stuck and I should get back into it because it's like such a cool thing Anyway, Labyrinth is incredible, and if you haven't watched it, do yourself a favor and watch it. Also in that realm is Dark Crystal, but you know, obviously. Okay, 
um, Rocky Horror Picture Show. I still haven't watched it yet this year because I'm saving it for Halloween night. I'm gonna watch it tomorrow with Cage and I can't wait. Uh, it's one of my Halloween favorites. I'm like so sad that we couldn't watch it in theaters this year. We just like couldn't find anywhere that was playing. And also like to be fair, it would be kind of like unsafe with like COVID and stuff. But one of my favorite things about watching the Rocky Horror Picture Show live like every year is like that there's all these tradition, like if you are a virgin like for the Rocky Horror Picture Show and like seeing it in person, um, there are all these like fun traditions that you get to do while you watch it. Like there's parts of the movie where all the audience members like throw toast or they throw rice or they like spray with water guns and you have to like use newspaper to cover up your head and it's like so cute and fun and it's just like sad that Cage and I don't get to do that together this year so I might like put together like a little pack of like our own little Rocky Horror Picture show like stuff that we can have just to like use in our pillow for it to like participate um, but it'll just be me and him and maybe our kitties so that'll be fun um, regardless whatever we do and let me combine these two mixed jaws. My bowl is too big for my strainer, so I have to like make a whole contraption. It's a whole mess. Um, regardless, next on the list. Yeah, Rocky Horror Picture Show, can't wait. Um, Coraline. I, when I was a little kid, before the movie came out, I was very fixated on the Coraline movie, or, pfft, on the Coraline book and I would read it over and over and over and um, I just was really creeped out by it but really like fascinated by it and Neil Gaiman is one of my favorite authors to this day and I think Coraline was the first book of his that I read and then I read like Stardust and like his short stories I'm obs oh my god his short stories are incredible especially like the audio versions I found as an adult and I like love them so much um, but the truth in a is a cave in the Black Mountain is my favorite short story by him and I'll link it below because it's a fantastic spooky listen and I think perhaps someone would like it for Halloween if you haven't heard it or his voice or his um, writing before. But regardless, Coraline I loved so so much as a kid and um, when the movie first came out I was not a fan of the animation style. I found it a little I don't know, I guess it just wasn't for me really. Like particularly the, char the character design. And I also found the char characterization of Carol Coraline a little bit strange because she just came off as kind of brattier than she did in the book to me. Oh, yeah. And I feel bad saying that, but um, it's a good, it's a good movie and rewatching it as an adult, I enjoyed it much more. And I love the spooky singing at the beginning. I love the other mother. I love, um, the, the animation is really so cool. Even if I find the character design like a little bit jarring, the animation is still ridiculously cool. And I love all the rats and the mice and the cat I love very much. And um, yeah, also one thing that happens to me every time it gets super foggy and I went to school, like I went to university in British Columbia and in BC it gets extremely, extremely foggy to the point where like you can't really see very far out because of the fog. And every time that would happen to me, I would feel like I'm in that scene in, Cor in Coraline in the book where like she just, she just goes into like nothingness where the other mother hasn't like built the world yet. And um, I think about that every time I step into deep fog. <laughs> anyway, um, next on the list is Edward Scissorhands. Of course, Halloween classic. I haven't watched it this year yet. I'm planning to watch it today or tonight um, to rewatch it because I've seen it before, obviously. Um, but yeah, looking, looking forward to that one. Okay, next one. Black Cauldron. The Black Cauldron. I am really into the older Disney movies. Like, I haven't seen like Cinderella, um, Aladdin, those kind of things, but I really, really like like the Black Cauldron and the Sword in the Stone and Fantasia and those kind of ones. I know there's some questionable scenes in Fantasia, but for the most part, I enjoy it. I have all these little cupcake holders that are spooky that I'm hoping to use. But regardless, Sword in the Stone, I love it. It has a prophetic pig. It has witches. It has a scullery maid pretending to be a princess. It has fairies. It has really spooky villain guy in it, the, the horned king. Um, I, I really, really enjoy, I love Henwin the pig. I love, um, what's his name? Gurgi? 
think his name is Gurgi. I love the little dog Gurgi thing. Um, he's very, very sweet. Um, I feel like my camera is going to die soon. So if it does, um, I will catch up with you in a moment, but I'll just keep recording as long as I can. Um, so Black Cauldron, I love it. Um, little Shop of Horrors. That is one of my absolute favorites. I think I've watched it three times this season so far. Um, I, mm, I can never get enough of that movie. I love Audrey. I love Seymour. I didn't know there was an alternate ending until this year because the version that I had always seen was where they end up happily ever after. The other week I was watching the movie and Audrey gets eaten by the plant and like sacrifices herself and then Seymour gets eaten by the plant and I'm like I'm sorry what is happening like I was so confused and then I looked it up and there was an alternate ending and I was like whoa who would have thunk I did not know um so that was really interesting I love um the chorus I don't know if that's what you call like the three girls that are singing uh crystal chiffon crystal chiffon and oh my gosh what's the other one's name crystal chiffon and Rhonda? Either way, the three singers, I love them so much. They are so talented. Their outfits are so good because they're always like color coded to all the different scenes. And I just like really love like old timey movies like do or old timey music, like doo y music. It just makes me so, so happy. And um, them three, their voices are incredible and their outfits are incredible and their acting is incredible. And I just, they're incredible. I love them. So Little Shop of Horrors, if you haven't seen it, I love it. It's a musical. Um, yeah, I, I, I just really enjoy it. Next, Rosemary's Baby. I hadn't seen one, this one until this year. This was my first year ever seeing it. Um, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, I'd always heard like interesting things about it. Like I, I, I thought it was a vampire movie for the longest time. And spoiler alert, if you don't know, but it's more of like a demonic possession sort of movie or like a demonic baby sort of movie, which Rosemary's Baby, yes, one could presume that. Um, but I just love the old timey sets and like everyone in old timey movies talks like very like particularly and I enjoy it very much. <laughs> oh my gosh I'm like making a little bit of a mess with the cupcakes. But the actress Mia Farrow, I'd always heard people say the name Mia Farrow, Mia Farrow, like Mia Farrow is so pretty. And now that I've seen it, I'm like, yes, oh my goodness, Mia Farrow is so pretty. I really, really like her. And um, her boyfriend is the worst, like Gaslight gatekeep man. I hate him very, very much. Um, and it's just, it's a very interesting old movie. I like spooky older horror movies because they tend to be a little less scary than modern horror movies because those can be a little too like realistic for my tastes. So um, yeah, I liked it a lot. It was good. Um, definitely some triggering stuff in this. Honestly, all these movies have triggering or like problematic things in them, um, but watch at your own risk. Um, Practical Magic. I freaking love Practical Magic so much. Um, it's very much like one of those like sister witch movies and I love movies about sisters who are witches and it's another one of those where it's just like beautiful scenes of the of the fall and it's very corny but it has um, Sandra Bullock and um, what's her beautiful name? Um, Redhead who was in Moulin Rouge. Uh, 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 I'll just put her name down below because I can't think right now. But I love that movie. I love Redhead, who was in Moulin Rouge's um, character in that. Um, what are their names? I love it. I love like their two aunts that live um, in the house together. I I really like shows and movies where there's like witches that are like older ladies who like live together in the in the same house, and if they're sisters or like girlfriends or like whatever, that's a bonus. Um, but um, not both obviously. But yeah, Practical Magic is like a fun, spooky movie who's like pretty corny, um, but also just just fun to watch for Halloween and and it, it, it's it's cute. Um, what's next? Uh, the Craft. I, I enjoy The Craft. I hadn't seen it when I was growing up. I like think I first watched it like in my early 20s, but I really enjoyed it. And it's so funny. I had like the DVD of it, but my DVD would always skip over the one portion of it where like they go into the cave and like perform the whole ritual for, um, what do they call them? Some name that starts with an M for their like deity that they worship. In go the cupcakes. I hope they turn out okay. 
but I really, really enjoy that movie. Um, there's really cool costume design. I really want to make a Nancy doll. Honestly, through all these movies, I like want to make an Emily from Corpse Bride doll. I want to make a Sally from Nightmare Before Christmas doll. I want to make uh, Elaine from The Love Witch. That would be super fun. Uh, Mrs. Lovett from Sweeney Todd. I would love to make like little dolls of all these ladies because they're just like so iconic. Wednesday Adams, Morticia. Ay, ay, ay. Look how cute this little ghost is. <laughs> he turned out okay. What's up? Have my perfect cooking companion here. I know. And there's some uh, bats in the oven that are chocolate hazelnut and I'll fill them later tonight when they're all cooled down. And those are the chocolate cupcakes. They're looking pretty nice. So I guess while I wait for things to cook, I'll just finish off talking about my list. Um, so the craft, yeah, I love it. Sorry, my um, camera overheated and died. So that's what happened there. Uh, but the craft, definitely enjoy it. Um, it's a fun one. It also has like, for sure it's problematic aspects, but it's just, it's a fun Halloween movie. And I really enjoy it. Any witchy movie, it has really gorgeous um, setting and just like beautiful um, actors and beautiful sets is really good for me. I know, Chimba. What's up? Um, next on the list is Stardust, also technically not a Halloween movie, but I love Neil Gaiman and um, it's it was one of my favorite books when I was like a teenager. And um, the movie's really fun. The movie's much more like childlike, even though it has like some pretty dark themes and like mature themes in the book. Um, it's definitely a fun one. A little more corny on the corny side, but it's fun and I enjoy it. And it has like witches and Michelle Pfeiffer and um, a captain, like, like a sea captain, but his ship's in the sky and he likes to dress up in really fancy dresses sometimes. I love it, like it's, it's cute. Um, then <clears throat> Jennifer's Body, um, that was another one that I first, for the first time watched this year and I liked it a lot. It's very like nostalgic early 2000s with all the slang and the kind of like, oh, like, uh, like all the outfits and the way they like talk about things. It's, it's, it's very cute and just like reminds me of high school. Um, it was like gory and bloody, but also like kind of funny. So it wasn't like too intense for me and I enjoyed it a lot and I think that it would have ended up better if Needy and Jennifer ended up dating and they didn't go to that show and Jennifer didn't get possessed. Spoiler alert, sorry. This whole thing's gonna be filled with spoilers. Okay, another round of cookies are finished. Um, so yeah, I think um, they would have made a really, really cute couple and I definitely shipped them. Um, and I was sad that it ended the way it didn't. Same with the craft. I like, I guess I didn't ever watch it till the very end before because I would just like tune out but before the credits ran. But freaking Nancy ends up in a psych ward and it looks really violent and unpleasant. And I'm like, can we have some Halloween and spooky movies that don't have like mental health as this like big bad? Because like I love these spooky movies for like all their beautiful like set designs and stuff. But so many, so, some of them have such like horrible, horrible messaging and like morals that I'm like, oh, mm. but you know, aesthetics, that's what we're focusing on for this list. Uh, then Sleepy Hollow, I hadn't seen this one for so long, but I really, really enjoyed it. Um, the costumes are beautiful. Um, it was like, I had, I thought it would be like a little more child friendly, but like some of it is like very horrific, um, but I enjoyed it a lot and um, I thought it was fun. And normally I don't really like um, movies that are set in like kind of like Victorian times, like that's really my mom's thing. Um, I like more modern day stuff um, or like kind of 50s and 60s, but not like way back 1800s. Oh, I can't usually, but that one I enjoyed a lot. And lastly, but not leastly, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. I watched it for the first time this year and I love it. It's one of my new favorites. I'm gonna show it to Cage on Halloween night. We're gonna watch it in our little fort and I can't wait. I love movies that end up with like the outcast becoming like a good part of the town and like everyone ending up loving them. And it just, oh, it warms my heart. Her outfits are so perfect. Her makeup is so perfect. Um, the comedy is pretty funny, even though there's definitely like some like, mm, you know, jokes that I'm like, oh, can we not do this? But um, Elvira is just like, oh, she's such a queen. I love it. And then Honorable Man mentions or like just things that I watched but wasn't like wow this is incredible um Cage and I watched 30 Days of Night for the first time for me um the other day and I thought it was very interesting it was way bloodier and gorier than I'm a fan of and like dogs die in it which I'm like oh my god can we not and also the vampires aren't like cool 
like sexy Victorian vampires. They're like scary Nosferatu kind of vampires and they're very spooky with their like language and stuff. Um, so, and also I like could not understand, like I was like, they did something with the faces of the, or the makeup or something of the vampires where everyone looks really angular. And I was like looking at the actor pictures and I'm like, okay, this isn't just like what their faces look like, but they did like blackout lenses and like sharp teeth. And then I can't tell what the other thing that they did. I don't know if it was like, they put like maybe some fake like implant in the cheekbones to make their, I don't know what it is, but they all have like such a otherworldly look and it's very interesting. And I like couldn't tell what it was when I was watching it. So I was just like staring at the screen and I was like Googling it and no one seemed to have any idea. So it was very frustrating. And if you know, please let me know. Um, but yeah, 30 Days of Night was like a spooky fun vampire movie. And I guess if you don't like Victorian vampires and you want like scary vampires, I would recommend that. And then the other one that I watched that I really enjoyed, but it was interesting because the main actor is Greg in Good Girls, which Cage and I watched recently. So I kept calling him Greg, even though his name is Riley. And this one, these ones turned out interesting because <laughs> I was, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever, it's fine. Um, but it's really good. The acting is incredible. Um, it's a religious kind of themed horror, which I, ooh, I love religious horror stuff because I had like, I don't know, I had like a big phase when I was like 12, when I was like getting out of Greek mythology, I was getting really into like Christian mythology because like all the saint stories like there's so many of them that are so like supernatural and like bloody and gory and intense and I was like oh my god like this is very like it kind of read like um horror to me oh my god I hope I don't offend people with this take but basically I like got really into it and then I like tried to go to church and I was like oh this isn't like this isn't like the fun stories and the mythologies and stuff. No, this is not for me. So, um, apologies if you are religious, Catholic, Protestant, whatever. Um, I, I do not practice that. I practice different things, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> but regardless, I really like religious horror because it kind of brings me back to that 12 year old time where I was just like, oh, spooky Catholic imagery and like being goth and 12 and whatever. Um, so liked that except it has a really sad ending and I hate movies with sad endings I do not like them that is also why I didn't include Haunting of Bly Manor even though I love that one it ugh, I hate things that end so sad like I, I really like happy endings I hate movies where people die at the end I hate um I usually don't like apocalyptic horror movies especially because with COVID they feel way too close to home um and Cage really loves apocalypse stuff and like zombie stuff and I, I don't like it because it makes me feel really like too close to home I like to find Halloween movies I like I look up like kids Halloween movies and that's where I how I go so um yeah regardless that's all I got for Halloween movies you'll probably see um a little update of like when I'm decorating cookies and stuff maybe I'll um tune in and show y'all some of that yeah I think that's all the plans for tonight and then tomorrow I have the day off and I'm gonna do my cosplay and I'm gonna go out and take a walk with Cage and we're gonna take spooky pictures I'm gonna eat all the delicious baked goodies that I made and the ones that I got from work <laughs> and um we're just gonna oh we're gonna have the best time I can't wait to watch X movies in the fort with him so um yeah I'll probably catch y'all soon or later or probably it's gonna be five seconds for you but it's probably gonna be like a couple hours or a day for me. So, um, see you later and thanks for tuning in. Bye! Alright, so it is later on the same day. It's the evening and I'm just putting together the chocolate hazelnut bats first. So I'm putting the spread between them. I put a little recipe card of everything next to things, but you can tell that the cookies are really, really pale, which is why I have to, um, cover them in the cocoa powder which you will see eventually but my goodness dipped in coffee they are so freaking good I was really really excited about how they turned out I'll definitely be making these more so here I am just um, putting a cocoa powder and sugar mixture over them and once they are all nicely dusted I just tuck them away into the cookie jar for later I'm obsessed with this cookie jar I'm so happy that I got it this year I'll definitely be using it year-round and Cage really likes it too so very very happy it's nice and airtight and it fits so many cookies so very good um, then it's time to just um, powder the moons and I'm just using some icing sugar on the little crescent moon cookies. I love these guys so much. They're Cage's favorite too. And I'm just arranging them on this nice spooky plate that I got. I absolutely love how all the spooky cookies look um, set up. <laughs> Um, then it's time to ice the cookies and I am not very good at icing cookies honestly I hardly have any experience with it and using the little like 
um, Ziploc bag that I DIY'd was not very easy, so they are not super neat, but I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. The um, icing actually set really well after like one day, it was very nice and hard. Actually, after even like 20 minutes, it was pretty solid, which is cool, and I was able to like kind of fix it up and fill in all the gaps with a toothpick while it was still wet. So I did kind of like the classic jack-o'-lantern and then added a couple of stripes. I'm still not sure how I feel about the stripes. Maybe it looks a little bit like it's crying, but I think it works out. And then I wanted to make like a cute little surprised pumpkin. Um, so he's got little round eyes and a little round mouth. Um, and at the end of it, he <laughs> kind of looks like a garlic, like a piece of garlic, but it's fine. I know he's a pumpkin and we know he's a pumpkin, so it's fine. Move on. Um, just fixing it up. And then these are all the gingerbread pumpkins together. Look at the little family. I think it looks so cute. Um, then it's time to ice the cupcakes. And again, I am not good at icing cupcakes, especially not with my like little DIY contraptions. But this icing tastes so good. The salt like in the salted buttercream is one of my favorite things. Like I love salted chocolate. And with the little cupcakes, they're like much less of a commitment than the big cupcakes. So it was very delightful to just have them. Then my favorite part of making cupcakes is the decoration part. Um, so I'm using these sprinkles that I got from Home Goods. They're so cute. They have like little black bats and little white ghosts and little witch hats. And um, I did get a comment being like, make sure that the sprinkles are vegan. And don't worry, I always check and make sure that all the ingredients I'm buying are vegan. Um, you know, it's it's very important for me. And they just look so cute all decorated up. I ended up putting some little toothpicks with like spiders and uh, bats in them later. But you'll see that in a sec. Anyway. Once everything is baked and ready, I just wanted to arrange it all on like a nice spooky plate and basically just put it all together so I could admire my handiwork. That sounds so stupid, but I was really, really proud of myself. And so put out the little matcha ghosties, put out the little chocolate um, hazelnut bats. Then it's time for the pumpkins to live up on the top. And um, also, Cage and I, of course, left out some of each suite for, you know, like spirits passing by as a like a little offering kind of thing just inside with the candle. Um, so, yeah, um, I'm also adding the cupcakes that I got from work. So when I had everything nice and plated, I just decided to set it up on this little like tea table that Cage and I found on Facebook Marketplace with like this uh, lacy shawl that I made back when I was like 14 or 15. And here's just a nice visual of how everything looks. It's so cute and spooky. You can see that I have like um, the cookies from the trials, but also the cookies that are recent. And like the more recent ones look a little better, I think. Um, the icing's more white because I didn't use vanilla, so that was an interesting thing. I also set up Halloween decorations around just to make it um, look cute and I used all the spooky plates that I got this year. Oh my goodness, I'm so happy with it. Like it just, oh, it was so fun and the house smelled so good with all the baking, like. <sighs> all right, I have um, started this tea. Uh, it's just gonna steep in the fridge overnight. It's already getting pink, maybe. Uh, we'll see tomorrow. <laughs> This looks so cool and bloody. It's like um, this very fruity apple rose hip tea that I get from my work. I'm gonna add some peach syrup to it tomorrow and maybe some lemonade. And um, yeah, I'm really excited. It's gonna be delicious. I know it's like kind of more summery, but the red kind of makes it feel Halloween. Um, and it's gonna have all the spooky ice cubes so that will make it very Halloween. I'm excited. And also it's officially Halloween because I'm filming it, this at like, 12.05 or 12.10 or so um, on October 31st, so happy official Halloween. By the time I upload it, uh, this, it will probably be belated, but um, yeah, yay, love it. <laughs> Hello, so it is officially Halloween. Happy Halloween, everyone. I'm so, so excited. Um, unfortunately, I woke up with a little bit of a sore throat which I don't love for me. Um, so for that, and as well as for just like a general Samhain home cleansing, I thought it would be great to start off this morning with a nice um, like kind of herbal steam for my house. Um, and then I'm probably gonna take a shower with my like bloody octopus guy, cause he's literally so cool. He's like passion fruit and guava bun stuff. Uh, but for now, while I just kind of clean up my house, and do a little bit of candle lighting and remembering for Samhain. I'm just gonna have the steam going in the background. So it's just hot water on the stove. 
um, on low heat and I'm just adding a couple ingredients. This salt is just like pink salt for cleansing. I'm going to add some rosemary for the protective qualities because I feel like salad's a great time to do like protective wards over your home and things, but also um, for my congestion, I think it will be helpful. Going to go ahead and add a little bit of thyme. I love thyme. It's one of my absolute favorite herbs. Like, the plant itself is gorgeous, but the flavor, oh my goodness, incredible. The smell, oh my goodness, incredible. I feel like it's a little bit underrated. I feel like it would probably be more appropriate to do like a steam today with like cinnamon and orange and those kind of things. Um, but I do not like cinnamon. And I do not have any oranges on hand. So it is what it is. I'm just adding a couple of um, sage leaves from my sage plant. And then this is just like this oil that's like my mom would give me when I was younger when I was feeling congested. So add that. Look at our beautiful little cauldron bubbling away. Um, so I'll just let that steam up the house and since I made so many baked goods I'm probably gonna pack up a bunch of them and bring them to work for my coworkers because I did book the day off but Cage is at work. Um, he only has one tattoo today. Um, but yeah this morning I just plan to pack up some baked goods, bring those to work, get some laundry and a couple errands done and just prep so I can have a really fun night tonight with Cage and not have to worry about any errandy things. So um, I'll see you later. So I've loaded up my little box of Halloween treats for my coworkers who um, I feel so bad that they're working today because I booked the day off because I was like in advance I knew that I like did not want to work today. So I'm going to bring them some treats and um, I hope they enjoy and um, I'm so excited for Cage to get home because we're going to carve these pumpkins. Hi Loon! Hi Lamb! You want some? I think she wants a taste of the cookies also. Anyway, I'm off to drop these and then I'll come back and probably start getting ready for my cosplay. I'm, I'm really excited to go out dressed up with Cage tonight. Hello! Um, so I'm gonna try to do my Lydia Dietz makeup. Um, I know that her makeup in the film is honestly pretty neutral, so I'm gonna do like a slightly more um, intense version of it. I'm hoping for... Hi Lemon! Hi sweet girl! Um, so... I think I'm just gonna do like very red eyes and like contour and um, we'll see we'll see where it goes um, but anyway I, I had a really nice time this morning after I had um, that nice steam on the stove I um, had a very nice cup of coffee and ate one of my chocolate hazelnut bats and dipped it in the coffee and it was so delicious and I took my little walk to work and one of my coworkers was dressed up in a really cute onesie and I got to say hi to both of them and they were both so sweet um, and we're very happy that I dropped off some cookies so that was super cute and I went to the grocery store and just picked up a couple of groceries and I have the laundry running in the background so I apologize if you can hear that right now. Um, I'm super excited for Cage to come home. I can't wait to see him and um, um, lately I've just been listening to a lot of, um, okay, so basically I need to listen to people like talking when I fall asleep. So I usually listen to like podcasts and I really enjoy sleep podcasts. Um, so one that I and Cage have found this year that I really, really enjoy is, um, Guts, it's called Get Sleepy and uh, one of my favorite narrators on there is Thomas Jones and for all of October or like the last couple weeks they've just been doing a lot of like Halloween and spooky episodes and it's my absolute favorite thing to just like listen to people talk about um, like taking walks in the forest and like visiting corn mazes and pumpkin patches and that kind of thing and it just made me so happy and this morning I found a bunch of different um, witches on YouTube that have um, like vlogs and I was watching them do their like Samhain rituals and stuff and talk about like ancestral work and whatever so that was super fun to like learn about some different people. I'll definitely link some of them below because I think you guys would really enjoy it. I know a couple people have asked me about witchy stuff before um, and 
maybe you'll enjoy um, some of some of these creators. Um, I also spent some time just playing with Lemon and Tuna um, with their like Halloween toys and they're just like the sweetest ladies in the whole wide world. I love them so much. I, I constantly tell Cage and he constantly tells me like we're so lucky to have these little ladies in our lives. Oh my god, I haven't done contour on my face in forever when I was um like kind of oh my god that's so dark oh my god okay i'm gonna have to buff that out quite a lot oh my goodness okay um when i was like kind of 15 16 i felt like my face was super round so i would do a lot of contour um and i remember one of my friends just being like you look gross and dirty and i hate it and you need to stop like doing this kind of makeup and it made me like so self-conscious, but I kept doing it for quite a long time until um, I feel like in my 20s, my face got like a little bit more angular and I stopped feeling like I needed to do contour to have like the, the face shape that I was looking for. Um, plus it just like takes a long time and I can't be bothered to spend more than like 10 minutes on my makeup every day because um, I just do my eyebrows on my eyes pretty much. Um, hmm. I feel like I could go heavy-handed because Lydia's very gaunt, gothic queen. Um, oh my gosh, I was... Oh my god, when I smile it looks insane. But, um, so I'll try to, try to keep it not smiling. I'm also a little bit worried about the wig because I am not a hairstylist. I, um, do not know much about hair stuff it's never been of interest to me i spent most of my teen years just like straightening my hair and killing it like every single day and nowadays i just like let it do its thing um I've, I've given up on straightening and i'm just like whatever which is to say that i don't have much experience with wig styling or hair styling in general so i'm just hoping that all goes well i feel like this side looks a lot better than this side but maybe it's just because of the light Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I'm also gonna do Cage's makeup tonight and I'm really, really looking forward to that. We'll try it we'll see how it looks with the rest of the makeup. Okay, I should have washed my makeup brushes last night because they all still have my like normal colors that I use, but I just like to do this usually to clean them off. I was watching Little Shop of Horrors again this morning because what else do I do with my life? <laughs> and I just, oh my gosh, I love Audrey so much and like her voice so much like her really really squeaky tiny little like adorable voice but also like when she sings because there's some songs that she sings and suddenly she gets like really deep and like uses her whole diaphragm I guess I don't know like her whole chest to sing and it's it's so freaking cute and I, I love her so much and I love the costume design in that show so much and the songs are so fun and it's just such a freaking classic that I do these way too bushy I feel like I can't really do my brows not bushy because like Lydia doesn't have bushy brows but I naturally do so I'm mostly like glue them down which I don't feel like doing because I feel like I don't I, I, I don't have <laughs> I don't want to do that for the whole day um yeah it's probably good enough though just like a natural brow mm. And I'm gonna do like a different thing with my makeup than I normally do because normally I do like kind of a cut crease sort of thing like not like a proper one because I can't be bothered but like I do like darkest in the crease of my eye but Lydia has kind of like darkest on the lid and then it kind of goes out. I'm gonna try this different sort of look and hopefully it works. Anyway, I'm really excited for this evening because I'm hoping to just like walk around um, with Cage and look at um, spooky house decorations that have come out because I've been taking the back streets around like where I live when I've been going to work lately just to kind of scope out like if there is Halloween happening and there's a little bit of Halloween happening so I'm really excited to go look at it with him and hopefully see everything like lit up at night because every time I've gone it's been like during the day so maybe like people will put out extra things or like jack-o-lanterns or just like something fun that we could admire and look at tonight. I think that'll be really, really lovely. And it just, um, 
it makes me feel really nostalgic for like being a kid and like going trick-or-treating because I grew up in like a really really teeny town where all the neighbors were like very very far away from each other because it was like kind of farm sort of situation so um for Halloween we would like drive out into like the little like closest neighborhood and like go there and um there were so many people that would do like really elaborate or like there was one person that would do like really elaborate haunted houses um with like strobe lights and like the whole thing and it just like felt so freaking cool um and I don't think there will be anything like that today but it'll just be fun to like look at little jack-o-lanterns and stuff and I remember when I was a kid like being so disappointed because I grew up in Canada and it would always get like way too cold in the winter to go trick-or-treating without like a massive jacket on so you'd have your costume and then you'd have either the jacket on top or underneath and it was like so disappointing because you'd be like this is like such a cool costume but no one can see it or just like I feel like a little snowman like underneath my costume so I am hoping that the weather stays somewhat nice-ish tonight because um, I don't feel like wearing a massive blanket or something like that but I do have a pretty cool cloak um, if it does come down to it um, but hopefully Cage and I will go like right before the sun starts setting um, and maybe you can go to the park near our house and light some candles and do some tarot readings and um yeah there's just like a really beautiful like little rock garden really close to where we live so we could go to that um once we're done looking at um all the houses and things when it's dark we can go there and um i was planning to make some hot apple cider for our walk or like some hot chocolate so we'll bring that to stay nice and toasty and i'm hoping to take some pictures in the house but maybe we'll take some outside as well and either way i'm super excited oh I remember doing my makeup like this when I was like 15. Oh, I just wanted to look undead. Oh, this is fun. This is bringing back memories already. Ooh, Halloween's so magical, you guys. Samhain, Halloween. Um, so I guess, I don't know, if, if you are not familiar with Samhain, um, I can talk about it a little bit if, if you're curious. So it's basically like the witch's new year. Um, cause, um, with like the wheel of the year, um, Samhain or like Halloween or there's like a lot of different names for it, um, is when everything starts dying down and everything's been harvested and you can start to, um, collect, um, like basically, yeah, that you collect the harvest and since the earth is like kind of dying down, um, that's the end and then spring will be like the beginning um so yeah new year kind of time so today that's why i've been like doing all my cleaning and i plan to change my sheets before tonight and do like probably a smoke cleansing in the house because i found all my palo santo and it oh, smells so freaking good you guys and i've just been um burning it very very often um and maybe i'll do a very like intentional burning tonight oh my gosh I just got like so much right there. Oh boy. Uh, but do like an intentional burning with Cage and um, just think about things that we want to let go and you know, connect with people that we've lost. And um, yeah. I'm really looking forward to doing that with him. And we'll be carving jack-o'-lanterns when we get home and leaving those out um, and leaving some candles in our windows. Um, so it'll be nice. Maybe um, I'm also really excited to eat all our sweets and snacks together because it'll be like our little version of like a Samhain feast. Um, Cage doesn't really drink. Um, but I'm making this delicious like iced tea sort of situation with lemonade and peach and those kind of things and it's one of his favorite drinks um, so I'm excited I've been brewing it like cold brewing it since last night so it's pretty fun this is this is um, yeah this is good for I make it maybe I don't know I think so though Maybe let me just like smudge it out. Oh, I think I need like more underneath, like in the kind of, in this area. Like kind of in the eye socket situation. Yeah. 
And it'll be really weird to not do winged liner because I'm so used to doing that with like every single look I ever do. But Lydia doesn't have winged eyeliner. So that'll be that. And it'll also be weird to not have my glasses. But Lydia doesn't have glasses. <laughs> it'll be fun to try that. I'm excited. Oh, and I can't wait to watch movies with Cage tonight in the fort. Um, and have our snacks in the fort. And he bought vegan pizza a while ago. So we'll probably eat some of that for dinner and a bunch of candy because we're like little unhealthy monsters and I can't wait. I can't wait. So no cat eye, just a little bit of liner. Oh, very strange. Very strange to do makeup like this. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's fine. So I'm using like this palette that I got a while ago, like couple of years ago, a year ago or so, from ColourPop. I like it a lot. Okay, mascara. Yeah, there's nothing like super distinctive about this makeup. I feel like I look kind of not done, but perhaps when the wig is on and the dress is on, everything will look like it has come together. That was not a sentence, oh my god. Okay. Mm. Okay, I kind of fixed it up in better light because I honestly could not see in my viewfinder. But I didn't do anything crazy, just added some extra color and blended. Okay, okay. Please get chunky mascara. I know people like want the opposite of chunky mascara. I like need chunky, crusty. <laughs> that sounds disgusting. Um, I'm sorry. But like, you know when lashes just look like super fake? That's... I like it. Um, and do 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 do. I need some highlighter. I know Lydia probably wouldn't wear much, but I just need a tiny bit to contrast with the um, with the um, contour. Oh my God! I cannot think. Sorry. Multitasking. Okay. Cool. I think it is looking all right. I might do a little bit of black liner in my waterline just to kind of deepen it up. Cool. All right. And now is time for the thing that I've been dreading, the wig. Let's get into it, you guys. So I gave up on the wig real easy because it was very thick and I was like, whatever, my hair is the same length. So first I am just straightening out the front portion of my bangs with my hair straightener that I have had literally since I was a teenager. And since I didn't want to cut my bangs too short, I kind of put them in like a little ponytail on the top of my head so it would kind of like remove a little bit of the length. Um, and then I'm just kind of separating them out into little chunks. I think Lydia has like six or seven, but I didn't really pay attention too much to how many I made. I'm just using some hair gel. Um, usually I just use it for doll hair, but it worked very good for my human hair. Um, and just making the little spikies. My hair texture worked pretty good with this because I have very thin kind of small hair and I know it's not black. I should have gotten like spray on black hair dye because we got spray on green for cage but I just like didn't bother getting it when I was there and I regretted that. Anyway, then I just decided to uh, take my kitchen scissors and trim them into little points because you know what, whatever. I am not a hairstylist so if this makes you cringe as like someone who knows about hair, I apologize deeply but um, yeah, it is what it is. And then I'm just kind of styling them a little bit more with gel and trimming them up a little bit more. And you know, it, it worked out. Like now I've washed out my hair and styled it as I usually do and my bangs look a little funny, but it's, it's, it's not like unforgivable. Anyway, then I take down my two wings and put up my, the rest of my hair in a ponytail with a scrunchie and just tease it the way that I usually do kind of straighten out my bangs, re-straighten some of the pieces uh, the, around my hair that frame my face, trim a little more, straighten the spikies, and we're good to go. So I ended up just using my hair because the wig sucked, I decided, and um, mine was easier. I know it's purple and Lydia doesn't have purple hair, but she will tonight. Hi, um, yeah, I straight up cut my bangs for this. So, uh, yeah, hope it looks okay. I think it'll look better when I'm all properly dressed up, but um, it's what we're working with so far. 
Here's the beautiful girl. And Cage and I just finished carving our pumpkins. And this is mine. I was super boring and I used a stencil. First time doing that I was like feeling bad because it's so cookie cutter. But it looks beautiful and I have like gravestones and a bat. And I think he looks good. And Cage was super creative and he did this super spooky black cat and I'm obsessed with it. He thinks it looks like a goofy alien, but I think it looks super cool. So yeah, that's exciting. And then Cage got me a surprise when I, um, when he came home, he bought this book that I had like mentioned. <laughs> it's so exciting. It's a Halloween party book. And basically you can make all your own like different vintagey looking decorations and like nut bowls and party hats and things like that. So I'm really, really looking forward to making things out of it with him. And um, yeah, he also like fixed up my wig, but I already did my hair. So I'm probably gonna just try on the wig tomorrow because I don't want to like mess up my hair in case it doesn't work. But he did a really good job and um, I'm really lucky. So yeah, all right. Okay, we just dressed up. And it's looking so cute. I'll insert proper pictures, but oh my god, I'm so stoked. Ah! Yeah! <laughs> it's exciting. It's so exciting. And our little sandworm. Little toonie. Mm. She's just... We'll hold hands. Okay. Oh, like the shadow. Oh, you... That's cute. I feel like it'd be and... so like, awkward doing like. There's like wedding like, photos? Like, wedding photos or anything? I don't know. Oh my gosh, there's two. Oh. That's good. I can see that. Yeah. Oh, it's too late. There's a little sandworm. Tee, tee. Oh, poor Tuna. I love you. And I'm sorry you hate this so much. Lemon the Pumpkin King. Oh my god. Why is she the sweetest girl in the world? <laughs> <laughs> Lemon. She's really cute. Chimba. Can I see your cute face? Oh my god, stop your face. Stop. You are so cute. She gets her treats for being so good. Come here. Lemon. Here. Do you want to wear a costume? <laughs> So we're about to go out on our walk. We just took a couple. Yeah, we just took a couple of spooky pictures together, and we turned on the lights. Turned off the lights for a second. Look how pretty our jack o' lanterns look. Like, cages looks amazing. Mine is pretty cool too, but I still feel a little bit guilty about using a stencil. But yeah, so we're gonna put these guys outside and go on our little walk, and I hope we see some spooky things while we're out there. So, Cage and I just got back from trick-or-treating, or not trick-or-treating, well, we kind of did because a bunch of people left candy bowls out and it was actually so much fun, it was so cute, we just went on like a super little walk um, around our neighborhood and there was a person that set up a whole leaf blower with like candy at the other end of the tube so it was like way more than six feet away so that was super fun and also we met a really adorable cat who was like so friendly and came like right up to us and there were like some little kiddo trick-or-treaters behind us but other than that we were like the only ones out there so it was super fun right now <clears throat> cage is preheating the oven and i am making um us some delicious drinks in these fun skull cups um so I have my tea that was steeping overnight last night. I have my peach syrup, lemonade, and my spooky ice cubes. So we'll mix it all together and I'm super excited and I think it'll be super tasty. And I know Cage really likes this drink. So, and I enjoy it too, obviously. Otherwise, I wouldn't make it for us. So I'll put a couple of each ice cube. Witch hats. Bats. And pumpkins. Cool. And yeah, it was just like really delightful to get to be out there and among the people, but also feeling like it was not among the people. And I was telling Cage while we were walking around, like, wow, I wish that you could just go out for a walk anytime and see jack-o'-lanterns and little lights and people decorating and a couple of people in costumes and like candy bowls. Like if that was the case for every time I went out on a walk, I would never stop going on walks, you know, <laughs> or like just even like the autumn leaves. But it was so like normally I don't feel super like connected to the community at all, um, but seeing 
everyone's Halloween stuff made me feel like, wow, like, I would love to one day, like, decorate my whole place for Halloween. Because the place Cage and I live now is super fun, but it's kind of like tucked away, so people don't really come to us for trick-or-treating. But it'd be fun to set up one year, regardless of if people came or not. Anyway, here are our drinks. Gonna use the spooky um, straws in them. They have little screaming ghosties. And um, Cage is about to make um, pizza in the oven and we're just gonna have our nice drinks and I'll set up some snacks. We're gonna eat um, in the little pillow fort I set up and um, I'm just, I'm really excited. We, we had so much fun trick or treating out and I'm just looking forward to have a really cozy night in with him and our kitties as well. So I'll see you guys. Um, so I have combined the pumpkin seeds from the pumpkin with some salt, pepper, um, garlic powder, and dill. Um, so once the pizza is done cooking, I'm gonna turn the oven temperature down and roast these guys up. Hello pizza! It's done! I'm so excited. I can't wait! It's all set up! I brought some extra pillows down and I put our snacks here. I got a bunch of cookies and also some like vegan gummies and our drinks are there. And I've got my laptop all ready to go with our show. And I'm just gonna get to snuggle up and eat some vegan pizza and I can't wait to hang out with my babe. We're still in our Halloween makeup, so it's super fun and spooky. <laughs> Hey friends, sorry if the light sucks. Um, it's like November 4th, 3rd, something like that crazy. Um, sorry that this has been so long. Like I, I really wanted to get this video out on like November 1st, but I had so many issues with uploading and footage and stuff. But now I think I finally figured out everything for good and I'm very, very happy with that. Um, I just worked today, it was chill. It was the kitties last day and we get new kitties tomorrow. So I'm really excited to meet them. Um, but basically I just wanted to tune in to a say goodbye but also those paper crafts that cage got me because of all the issues i had with downloading i ended up having so much time and made all of them and i've added them to the halloween display so i just wanted to show you guys that as like the last little bit of halloween fun before the season is over because the season is over when i say it's over and it's never over so um yeah let's go look at those crafts and i'm just really excited to show you because they turned out so cute and i'm obsessed with them so let's go all right, so to begin, we have these nut cups. They are teeny tiny, and I don't know, like you could fit one peanut in these cups, but I think they are so precious. There's a bunch of different styles of them, so I did. I put the two pumpkin friends together. They're so precious. I love that this one has almost like little arms, but there's also a black cat and a duck on this side. Um, there's also two of these witches. I don't know about these witches though. So I just kind of hide them in the back right now. Um, another witch that it came with that I made just to see how it would look is this one. Um, with like a kind of pilgrim hat and like a, a little white neck scarf, which is kind of fun. Don't see that very often. Um, but the things that I do love, oh my gosh, these headbands. I thought there was no way that they would fit on like an adult such as myself, but they totally fit. And I'll have to show you guys because it's pretty adorable. Um, I mean, like the, the headbands are. And then I made also this guy from the book. Um, he's like this three-dimensional pumpkin friend and just so, so cute. Uh, here's another one of the headbands. Wah! Sorry. Here's another one of the headbands. He reminds me of Mr. Jeremy Fisher from uh, Peter Rabbit, so I like him a lot. Another headband. This one has a pumpkin on it, which I think is precious. Then there's this spooky black cat, which I think is so fun. He's a headband. And another nut cup. This one's an owl. These are some of the treats that are left from when we went sort of trick-or-treating, but more or less just walking. And the final black cat. This one's so fun. I really, really like this guy. Um, he's nice and big, and he lives with the other like black cats and pumpkin friends. Um, so, oh yeah. And then Cage, oh my gosh, he just like surprised me with this, which was very sweet. Um, it's like a cool bat lady bag and I just put it in the Halloween display because it works so good here but once I find a good use for it I'll definitely use it but oh my god I love it so much um so let me show you guys really quick the um headband and yeah one sec so not gonna lie it feels like a little tiara on me like a little frog tiara but like it totally fits and it works as like a little 
a little crown from um, around my bun. So I think that's super precious. And this is just the frog one, but they all fit and they're all so freaking cute. I really, really enjoy them. And um, while we're here at like the Halloween area, I almost forgot. I wanted to show you guys, I updated this whole kind of section over here because my grandma recently sent me a bunch of her like old jewelry and stuff and little knickknacks and trinkets that I just thought were kind of appropriate to attach in the little the little area. So I've added like this cool brooch, this lock, an old clock or um, pocket watch thingy, another brooch, these two pictures of relatives presumably. I asked my mom who they were and she didn't know. So yeah, I don't know. Um, there's like a, a little cross pin up there and these really cool bone um, pins, the flowers, they're like made of bone. How cool is that? Um, and I also put this little brooch down here. He's super cool. Um, but yeah, I thought it just like added a little bit of ancestral stuff to the Halloween slash Samhain cabinet and I love it and I think it looks super cool. Oh, and also Cage picked up this lamp from Facebook Marketplace that has such a spooky vibe. This one, I love it. it. You can't see here, but it makes the room like the most beautiful amber glowing color in the world and I'm obsessed with it. So yeah, just a little update on general decor, I guess. <laughs> Last Halloween thing I'll show before I go that's not really a Halloween thing, but Cage ordered this canvas, canvas? I don't know what it's called, but this thing a while ago that came in and I love it and it's spooky, so I figured I'd show it in this video. It's like a skeleton, a snake, and a spider, and there's like butterflies, heart, grasshopper, more butterflies, more snakes, and then there's the love of my life. Looney Tunes, this blue bin is like her new favorite spot to sit. It's really, really cute. But yeah, I really like this print. I'm trying to get like a full picture of it. How freaking gorgeous and how gorgeous is she? Anyway, I love this thing and we would have never had space for it in our old place. So it's so cool to live in like a space now where we have space. Oh my God, I didn't mean to zoom in. Where we have space for things. But um, that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. Thank you so, so much for watching till the end. That honestly means the world to me. And um, me and Tuna wish you... <laughs> me and Tuna wish you a really, really lovely rest of your night or day or whenever you're watching this. Again, sorry for the lateness of this. I did not mean for it to come um, so late in spooky season, but I really, really appreciate that you watched anyway. And um, sending all my hugs and well wishes and bugs and hisses to you. Have a good one. Bye.